Perfect blend of structure, of a uh, very efficient structure, yeah. and the geometry of it, mm -hmm. but done in such a way that it has an artistic touch, like almost like a seashell. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it, to me, it's a unique blend of those two things that you don't see in other conventional homes. Uh, or, or do you know of any other in Orange County that? Well, I don't. I actually like don't this? know. I don't know of any other houses that have the same type of patterning to them. And one of the things with the Horizon Home project that was going on, which um, we actually have a book coming out from Guardian Stewardship Editions on the Horizon Home project, which is 160 houses throughout the country. Every single one of them is different. There, there is nothing the same. Now, there's a number of houses that we know that are mid-century modern that are in Los Angeles and even some in Newport Beach like this and in Palm Springs that are round and concrete-like, but they are not doing the same structural issues as, as this. They may have kind of a round portion that is a living room, but then you have these boxes kind of coming off of them. But mm -hmm. something that's completely held up by the center trunk in this building is I don't know of any other building that's done at this scale that uses that method and particularly uses it that has the shot crease method of this very, very thin skin. It's not, you know, there's a number of round buildings that have upside down, you know, V arms basically coming out from the center that are commercial buildings that hold a building up that way. So there are girders on the top that then come down to the middle. But even if you look at the Johnson Wax project by Frank Lloyd Wright that used a similar type of tree trunk, pre-stressed kind of uh, form, it's a much smaller form than this. It's not even close to this. No. So I, I really don't know of another building that, and Hans, I'm sure this wave is used to pick up some of that perimeter stress issue. I mean, wouldn't it be? Well, I think it's 99% it's, uh, aesthetic. Well, <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to say you can't remember. <laughs> George could have had just an you know, ugly precast element, but he designed right. in this beautiful curve. See, I would think that, especially even over time, that having that curve on there for any kind of variation that may have occurred during construction even, it gave you a little bit of free play because if you look at that edge, <coughs> you can see that it's not, you know, exactly <laughs> parallel. Mm -hmm. And if that were just a perimeter ring, you'd really notice it, you know, much more strongly. So I think that that's a very nice effect for our eyes to kind of see that there's more beauty to that and we're not looking at this kind of simple rigidity of what the structure might be. Because there is a combination in this of the kind of swoop of the central trunk and this waviness of the perimeter, which we wouldn't expect to have happening with concrete. And so even, even as I'm looking through now, like right through the clear story area back over there, it almost looks like fabric. Mm -hmm. that, that looks kind of like a fabric edge there, which I, I think is amazing for a concrete structure. I think the message really is you can do many, many wonderful things with concrete and creativity. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really true. Very, very good. we got three questions. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it rains, is there noise? Number two, when it rains, where does the water run off? Number three, the building is now 50 years old. It's a consideration to make this a landmark building. Well, I'll start with the last question. Yeah. I would hope that this would be made a landmark building. And I'm very fortunate to have two houses myself that are on the National Register of Historic Places. So I think that this is a great opportunity for the first building in Laguna Niguel to be able to be nominated for the National Register. <laughs> yeah. So I think that would be water questions, considering we had a huge downpour just a couple weeks ago, I'm sure the owners might be able to tell us something about it, or the neighbors who would have seen where the water was coming off of all this. Or Hans, you must know where the water, where the water goes. Can you tell from up there? Sorry, neighbor.
Actually, the water hits the roof. Oh no, you can see it come down here. It actually yeah. just it's like yeah, a waterfall. Yeah, yeah, you can see. Oh yeah, behind a water yeah, water yeah. comes down. That's pretty nice. Oh, that's, that's pretty nice. nice. You see, there's these uh, drain systems yeah. there. Yeah. As a realtor, that's a hundred thousand more. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of these will have like water. Yeah, a waterfall. Yeah, water. 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 um, very light. It's actually very nice. You hear more of the, the rain hitting the trees. Mm -hmm. The leaves. Not the roof. We've been hearing earthquakes and you don't even hear them. I mean, it's just like it's a, a little bit of somebody tapping on a window. So, but Hans assured me that there's no worries. <laughs> <laughs> it's guaranteed. <laughs> but one of the things, um, you know, as with all these beautiful places, and by the way, I recommend you everybody drive around this neighborhood. Yes. Because there are other abyssals around here. In fact, this was their first time that we had a uh, a tailgate before our event. <laughs> <laughs> at Randy's house. Where's Randy? Right here. Yeah, at Randy's house up there. So they got the whole neighborhood together. So when they came in with a little dance, they had already had some gin and tonics up there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of the things is, and, and Alan here is a big part of our group as well, world-renowned architectural historian as well and he's really into a preservation of a places so I really recommend you uh, either go on his Facebook page which are some of the best places for them to, to see uh, yeah well, uh, Alan Hess.net is my uh, website and there are any number of uh, Facebook pages uh, that uh, are about preservation saving individual buildings and so forth so he's uh, saving a lot up in LA and he's really you know, marching forward but one of the reasons is is that people take this these great structures and they put carpet on them you know and they do all sorts of wild stuff and that's what you guys ran into right drywall drywall why I put drywall yeah. we're covered in drywall yeah. so that, yeah. what were some of the other things that fake break. well we're, we're we're looking at this astroturf here those were actually they tore out windows and put in closets and sheds and they, they didn't have the continuous windows all the way around but it's amazing things that are so leading edge and so beautiful and all of a sudden time moves on and you know the, the owners do weird things to them and then that loses <laughs> what they're what they're all about you know and the next thing you know they want to tear them down and stuff like that so we really have to give it to Alan really to step in there and well it's uh, with a building like this which is so simple clear uh, beautifully designed it has integrity to it uh, but then over the years, as Sean was saying, other buildings like this that have integrity, that have an architectural concept, are often, uh, they're May, killed May, by... May, May Company up on Wilshire, right? Um, Robinson? The May well, Company. Robinson's in Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills is now threatened. It's going to be going down this uh, fall. But then, for example, uh, William Kreisel, uh, a great mid-century architect, uh, and his house up in Brentwood, was just demolished a couple of, about a month ago, I think it was, um, very suddenly, without any warning, really, and uh, it, 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 he is a distinguished architect. It is a case study uh, level of quality, uh, and that just went like that. Um, so we do need to be aware of these and protect them uh, and not uh, remodel them and put, you know, new, new, you know, brick surfaces on the interior partitions. We don't need to improve them that way because, with a, a building which is has this much integrity and uh, strength to it, um, you need to appreciate that. And that's what Laguna Friends of Architecture and other groups are so good at is helping to educate the community about that so that we don't lose more of these. But I would be all for having a, this be a landmark uh, building, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, keep the clapping going. Thanks for an arm, Pat, and we're on with this. And uh, Ted, and Alan, and Hans. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed yourself and have a great day. Hang out and have a good time. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay. Thank you. Oh, I need some. Great, thank you. I really appreciate that. So you moved over there, and then you became part of the the whole success of the evening by.